I'd like to welcome Derek to his first meeting. So we're glad to have you. Glad to hear. Okay, is Miss Tom is not here, is she? Miss Donna, do you want to go first? I can. Okay. All right, a couple of things for our parents to know about. Um, the end uh, midpoints of the first nine weeks is this Thursday. August is gone and we're already at midpoints and it has flown. Uh, also this Thursday we'll be playing Jacksboro at Huntsville. Next week uh, parents need to know about Spirit Week so the kids can dress up and participate which means it's our homecoming week next week. So our homecoming will be next Thursday at 6 30. We also have our fall health screenings on that same day. Uh, Big South Fork Storytelling will be there on Friday of next week. Uh, on the 19th is our next scheduled early release day, so we always try to remind parents of those times. Uh, dismissal from high school, special ed and pickups will begin at 12. First load leaves at 12.15, second load leaves at 12.40. <coughs> um, couple of other things. We want to thank Scott High Art Department. Uh, they have come out and helped us with some projects, and those kids have been wonderful very well behaved very well mannered and we appreciate everything that they have done they've done a fantastic job um, I also want to thank my parents um, last week and we actually were supposed to have had our open house the week before there was a death in my family so we had to postpone it which I really thought would hinder uh, the open house since we'd already sent out the letters and the all calls and all of that so we had to go back and change that push it up another week um, last year, I think we had a little over 50 parents show up, and we were just tickled to death with that. This year, this is how many signed in. We had over 111 signed in, and a lot of them came with their spouse. So we had way, it, it was triple what it, it had been, and I was just in total shock. Uh, I was so pleased with the parents, especially after we had to cancel it and everything, and a lot of them had to take off work and things like that, and I just so thank them for supporting the students, supporting our school, and doing everything that they do. This was the biggest turnout that we've ever had. Uh, we are looking uh, to technology to kind of upgrade, because we're going to have to move our location. That library can absolutely <coughs> not hold us anymore. We're going to have to move to the gym or the cafeteria. So we're going to do a little bit of work on our technology to be able to do that. But again, I really appreciate those parents for taking the time to come out, speak with the teachers, talk with us. Uh, it was a very good evening, and we just appreciate all of them for taking another evening out of their already, already busy schedule to come out again and uh, meet with us. So other than that, unless you have something for me. Thank you. Miss Lisa. I have basically the same things Ms. Goodman has said, just a few little extras thrown in. Um, along with the thank you to the art staff out there, they have been wonderful. They're redoing our bear and benches and things like that that we need to done around the school. Looks great so far. I can't wait to get everything finished. Uh, Girl Scouts are coming September the 12th. We're also doing health screenings, but it's on September the 12th. We have Haunting in the Hills same day on the 14th. And then I would like to say I want everyone to please pick up a newspaper. We are in there this week with our new playground and groundbreaking ceremony that's going to be happening on September 11th at 5 o'clock. We'd like to invite everyone out. Um, we are so excited to get this up and running and it's great big adventure to start off on and we are just <laughs> Gun hell ready to go. We've had lots of phone calls already, but we thank Mr. Garrett for doing that article and putting us in the newspaper and also all the other people that are sharing uh, the information. So if you have any questions about that or anyone in the audience does, please call us and we will be glad to share information. And that's all I have unless you have questions. Thank you. Ms. Stanley. Well, our <coughs> big news is that our pictures <coughs> are in and finished and they look fantastic. If you've not been up there to see them, you really need to come up by. Um, we just stand in my office some days and because we can look up there at them, so we just sort of stand and you know, admire the fact that they're there. Uh, but I do want to thank Mr. Hall and the board uh, for allowing us to do that, for getting us those bleachers because they, they are fantastic. And I also, you know, 
next week mm -hmm. we're looking at the lights and I know Mr. Hall is, is uh, looking into that diligently. Uh, if there's any county commissioners watching, I hope that uh, they will work uh, with him so that we can uh, see about getting the lights next. So. Uh, we did have the Zoodles program today. I don't know if you've heard of that, uh, but they, uh, it is an animal education program. Uh, it was so much fun. The kids absolutely loved it. He brought in uh, several different kinds of uh, sort of exotic type of animals. Uh, one of those was uh, a kink kinkajou, and uh, some people call it, I understand, a honey bear. And, uh, it, it's a real ear cleaner. Uh, that little thing would just crawl all over you, and we had the best time with that ever was. Miss Baden and I just about decided we might have to adopt one of them. Uh, but we had a really good time with that. Tomorrow we have health and dental screenings. Uh, we also have Tasty Day for the second grade. Next Tuesday night we have family reading night, and that will be from 3.30 to 5.30 in the library. <coughs> Next Wednesday, we have Big South Fork uh, Storytelling Haunting at the Hills. On our early release day, uh, as um, Stone or Miss Lisa one mentioned, uh, we're going to do CPR for all of our staff, uh, which is, when Mr. Hall and I talked about this, this is a subject that's real close to my heart, literally. And um, so I'm, I'm really glad that Miss Rosemary <coughs> has consented to, to come in and do CPR with all of our staff, not just uh, the teachers, but the teacher assistants, secretaries, everybody. Um, and on Friday the 21st, uh, Brandy Harris has written a grant uh, that she got approved and we are going to have Alice in Wonderland up there on the 21st on Friday for the kids. So that will be uh, something that they're looking forward to. And on the 28th, we will be having file pictures, which will also involve uh, the football team, the cross country team, and the cheerleaders. And that's all I have, unless you have questions. Thank you. Mr. Cash. I don't have a whole lot, um, other than everybody else has said it, um, most of what's going on. Um, I do want to welcome Mr. Saxton to the board. I, I wasn't, I went first last, last time, so I wasn't able to, I always catch up after I forget stuff. So I want to welcome him to the board. I've known him for several years, and I know um, he's done it for the right reasons, and, and want to welcome him to the board. Uh, I think he'll do a great job. Actually, I know he'll do a great job. Um, school's going well. Uh, we completed all of our benchmark testing, and we're starting our intervention groups. Um, so we're getting that up and going. Uh, football, uh, home game this Thursday against Sunbright. This is um, halfway football season, so we're looking forward to the home game against Sunbright. Our storytelling will be September the 14th at Fairview. Um, and we are, we also have, we, I got a sheet, Ms. Keaton just passed out, I'm sure she'll talk about, we've got most of our testing information back. Um, so we're going through it, it's hard. It's kind of hard to go back and make some changes based after the school year's already started and you're just getting results, but at the same time, we're still trying. We're still looking at everything, evaluating everything and seeing what we can do to, um, just make everything better, get everything better uh, for this year. Um, and that's all I have, unless you guys have any information. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Um, lots of dates here for you. Um, we are going to have progress reports going out by this Friday. We will send out pro progress reports with every student in every class. So parents need to be looking for um, for those. I'm kind of like Miss Donna. I can't believe that the midpoint is already here. Um, when I, I sent out that reminder to teachers um, next week, I actually got a few responses back that said, no, 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 count that up again. <laughs> um, it does seem like it has just went so fast, but we will have those out by this Friday for all students. Um, September the 18th is going to be our, our annual college and career day for juniors and seniors. So we're excited about that and we uh, certainly appreciate all of those colleges and area businesses that come out and participate in that day for us. We really appreciate that. September the 27th will be senior remake pictures for those seniors who didn't get um, those senior portraits made this summer or who would like a remake. That will be on September the 27th. Um, and we'll be sending individual notifications out to those students who miss those. 
September the 28th is our annual third grade day in preparation for our Heritage Festival, which is on September the 29th this year. <clears throat> Excuse me, from 11 to 5. So if you haven't marked those dates on your calendar already, please make sure you do. As you know, that's one of the biggest days of the year for us at Scott High. We hope that it's a, um, an annual event for you as well. Um, bring your family out. Remember, there is no um, admission charge, no parking charge. Um, it's a free day of fun and um, just lots of wonderful things um, that you can come out and enjoy with your family and we invite everyone out to do that this year. Uh, we're very excited and we are excited to host those third grade students on that Friday before as we uh, routinely do. So we're excited about those things. We've got some new things planned. I'm not going to tell you about. I'm going to let you be surprised when you come to the festival. Um, but it going to be a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, October the 2nd is our senior ACT retake and that's a really important day. Um, the state started that last year um, giving seniors another free opportunity to take the ACT <laughs> and as you all know um, ACT is, is really a big push with the state. Um, it's something that we've really been looking at for a long time. Um, if you've had any um, children who have uh, been in college recently, you know that there was a shift over probably about t seven to ten years ago where things shifted in the college um, scholarship world from a focus on GPA to really a focus on ACT. And so now um, a big portion of your scholarship dollars, your biggest portion of scholarship dollars are anchored in those ACT scores. And so we're really uh, working hard. We have been for the last few years trying to get um, those ACT scores up for all <coughs> students, but particularly for those students who um, whose post-secondary plans are to go to college. So we've been working on that, and as part of that plan, we are having all seniors participate in that retake day on October the 2nd. It is of no charge to them. All they have to do is show up for a regular day of school, and we'll have everything planned out, and they'll take the ACT. So it gives them one more stab at it. Um, for again for free and so we're excited to give them that opportunity and we have a large number of students who are what we call on the bubble they're right there they're missing one component by just a point or two and so we're going to try to do some of those prep activities that we did in the spring for juniors we're going to try to do that again for those guys going into this senior retake so we're really excited about that and i'll give you more information as that gets a little closer um, October the 3rd is another important day for seniors. That's the very first Tennessee Promise meeting. As you all remember, Tennessee Promise is that state program that gives all students two years of college for free um, at local community colleges. The only thing they ask students to do is do a little bit of community service and attend two meetings. That's it. This is one of those two meetings that they're required. It is during the school day, so again, all they have to do is show up to school. We'll take care of the rest, uh, but and we'll send out more information to them as time goes on. But again, that date is also important. Then October the 5th is our homecoming, um, so we're in preparations for that. We're going to try to squeeze in all those academic things that week and a little bit of fun at the end of the week, too, for homecoming. And then I don't know about you, but I think when that's over, let's just take us about a week of break, and then we'll come back and do it again. <laughs> and that's all that I have, unless you all have any questions. Thank you. Mr. Shannon. Yes, ma'am. As the other principals have mentioned, we do have great reports going home at the end of this week. I uh, hope the parents are, are looking for those. They should be in the backpacks or, or uh, in the hand of the students. September the 6th is our health screening day. Hopefully everybody's in attendance that day. It'd be a wonderful thing if they are. September the 10th, uh, Monday of next week, will be our first family reading night. and It'll be from 4 o'clock till 6 o'clock. Miss Darlene Overton does a wonderful job with that. Uh, so we really want to support and help that program continue to go and thrive. Uh, September the 14th, we'll have the Big South Fork Storytellers visiting our school. Um, and the last little note that I have here, other than uh, just everything going well, is that uh, Thursday night our football team travels to Jellicoe. And of course, Friday will be the uh, cross-country meet, I think, up here at Scott High again. So again, all things are going very, very well. Uh, the, the students, faculty, and staff are, are working extremely hard and doing a great job. So very, very proud of them. And uh, nothing else unless you have any questions for me. Thank you. Mr. Blake, do you have anything? <clears throat> well, I've got a couple of things. Uh, 
I do have an October 3rd CT director's meeting that will be held in conjunction with the league conference. I may need board approval to go down for an overnight trip. I may go the night before. I may just get up and go that day, but I'll just be going for the meeting more than likely, not the league conference. Uh, Ms. Trial and I have talked about the possibility of, of asking you all to, uh, or the advisability of asking you all to bid uh, services of parking lot, striping, and ceiling. We're going to kind of look at that and see how our bid limits fall and what we may need to do. We may have to ask you to add that to this month's agenda. We might do that via email. Is that something we can still do? Um, <coughs> What? Striping and sealing of parking lots. All of them? No, 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 not all of them need them. It's okay. just when you do a whole bunch, sometimes you go over a, a bid limit. Okay. And if you write you one, what yeah, you I'm sorry. If you do one, then we'll have per square footage. Yeah, well, we had talked about doing it that way because we ran into a situation where if you write uh, one check to a vendor of more than $10,000, even though it may be two separate projects, you know, it, it could cause the, you know, an audit to the audit. So that's, that would be the only reason we would do that. But we only like what the one Mr. Trial uh, And y'all probably know about this, but there is a, there's a new law that was passed, goes into effect January of 2019, about testing for lead in school drinking water. And so then checking into that, and that's an ongoing process. Um, the recommendation is that we test any place that a person could get water to drink, including sinks and fountains, ice machines, which you probably wouldn't think about that, but as that ice melts and you drink, it can be a source of lead. So we'll be working on that and just kind of mention that as a, uh, as a matter of information. Our, I'll probably have our maintenance crews in conjunction with our uh, cafeteria staff just make a survey of all the buildings. And the one vendor that I've talked to right now, it's about $8 a test if you test more than 200. And I suspect we could probably get over 200 pretty quickly. You know, when we think about this group of five sinks here in this hall, this group of five sinks in this hall, and all the water fountains and the kitchens and the ice machines, and the field houses and this building and the alternative site. So I imagine we'll add up pretty quickly. But I just want to make the board aware of that and let you know that we're working on that. Um, we do. We are going to be meeting out here to try to get some new science books for the second grade. We adopted grades three through five, and in the past, I don't think we've ever really bought for K one and two in science because they generally had plenty of other stuff to work on but some of the teachers feel like they need that so we're we're going to convene kind of a working group we're not calling it an adoption but a working group with the representative of the company and we're going to try to figure out some books that will go with the new science standards and then just in the matter of information october the 23rd we settled on for our fall ct advisory committee meeting so uh, any of you that's on that if some of you are on our advisory committee meetings, plus if any of you can just come out for it and see what we do. You'll learn a lot about CTE. So that's October the 23rd if you want to put that on your calendar. And that's all I have unless you have questions for me. Thank you. Ms. Lambert. Okay. Um, I did put together a folder for you uh, <coughs> the test scores. Um, <coughs> I wish that you could see the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages of data that we've had to print off. First of all, it was on, some of it was on Questar, some of it was on the accountability site, some of it was on the state website. I mean, it's just been scattered all over. Keeping in mind the problems that we had with testing this year, and I know uh, Greg's mentioned that, Miss Donna. So many of the school, it, I mean, it was stop and go, or it was text to speech no longer available. It was different things like that. But the state still says um, 
you know, we should take that into consideration, but when they had a team investigate, they did say it really didn't matter a whole lot. So we feel like it did. So keeping in mind all the problems that we had, we I do have a portion of the test score sorted out and figured out to share with you today. First of all, um, I think in that folder I do have second grade, um, and second grade just now come in. And actually, I have Winfield's box with labels here. I don't know where the rest of the schools are, but that because that's the only one that has come in. Hopefully, the rest will come in. But if you look at the sheet that I did with um, second grade. Second grade did paper and pencil test. Um, they, they were not supposed to or, or could not do anything online. So, you know, it may be a little bit more valid than most of the uh, 3 through 12 tests. But if you do look at our grade 2 ELA, I have placed the state score here along with the system score for ELA and math. And we were um, a little bit disappointed in the ELA scores. And quite honestly, we chose to give that test because it was important to not only have some accountability, but for to be able to tell how stu what students were learning and what they were able to do and those types of things. We do feel like <clears throat> these scores, we know that these scores are lower than scores were last year. We also know that on the second grade test there were writing selections and two or three years ago we went to visit um, Clinton City Schools who were straight A's and, and had growth scores of fives and to see what they were doing. And they started in kindergarten uh, by Christmas, the kindergarten student being able to actually write six sentences and really making sure that kindergarten students were, you know, were introduced to the writing process because writing is in, has been integrated into every subject that we have now. So that second grade test was kind of a good, a good show to us possibly that maybe in that K1 and 2, maybe we need to think about whether or not we're doing as much of that writing as we need to do, as we need to. And we do have the blueprints for every grade, every, every subject that's going to be tested this year that gives the expectation for the test. So the blueprints are already out for this, this coming year's test, so we're certainly going to be looking more closely at those and then maybe uh, monitoring a little bit more on the writing process in those those lower lower grades math we were not um, it was a little bit lower than the state but we were not that disappointed um, in math if you look at our scores um, we had we actually had some really good scores second grade um, talk was second grade ELA talk was Winfield um, for, that was 34% on track mastered and math was also in field 58 percent on track mastered and that was higher than the state of 41 percent actually we had birchfield fairview and winfield that exceeded the state score in math so i think in three through eight our ela scores have been a little bit higher than math but in second grade um you know, we're, we're pretty much on track for math and really need to work on the ELA. So any questions about second grade? We, we do know we have a challenge and we are going to work toward that. Because I know the goal uh, by 2020 is that all, you know, the majority of third graders are able to read and, and that writing component's important part as well as uh, the reading, the literacy part in these lower grades. All right, the next one is starting into your three through eight. And just let me make sure that you understand that state scores, they, the state put out a little bit of a piece of information that said before we even talk about ours, in grades three through eight, 
Um, 35.7% of students were on track or mastered, and this was a little bit better in 3 through 5 than they were last year. About 40% um, and 40% were on track or mastered in math in 3 through 5, the same as 2017. So 3 through 5 is doing statewide fairly, fairly well. Middle school, grades 6 through 8. 32% were on of students were on track or mastered in ELA, and this was down uh, a little bit from the previous year. The previous year was 33.5, and then math was down from 34.6 to th from 35.7. So statewide, there's a little bit, you know, of a downward trend in those six through eights. Same thing with the high school. Um, in ELA, they were down uh, from 34.6 in 2017 to 29.4 um, the previous or, or this this past year. So a little bit of a trend with the state. And as you look at our scores that we have on the next sheet that you're going to see, we do have our system um, scores listed from 2018, 2017, and again the system does show a slight decrease in both uh, ELA and math. So even though, you know, we, we have our interventions in place and we were hoping that that was going to make a big difference, I, it still probably did make a difference for those students in RTI. You know, this is something we're going to have to look at the blueprints, see what the expectations are for this year as far as testing and, and make sure that we try to you know, cover those things that we need that we need to cover. And different schools are doing different things. We're we're looking at standards and what percent of students were able to master a particular standard that a teacher taught and really trying to pinpoint maybe a problem in individual classrooms. So that is your on track master two thousand eighteen to two thousand seventeen. The next piece that you're going to see was the very first piece that came out from the state and it is entitled 2018 Comparison to 2017 TN Ready Test Score and it does categorize it uh, from 3 through 8 or 3 through 5, 6 through 8 and then a 3 through 8 test score. And as you can see for us, 6 through 8 showed an increase um, of just a, a fraction of a point uh, in ELA. But again, just like the former sheet shows, we, we do see a small decrease in our other subjects as well as um, some of our high school subjects too. So um, kind of rude awakening in some cases for us. We do still feel like if testing had gone a little bit more smoothly, uh, it would have it would have helped uh, benefited because I know once some students felt like tests did not count, uh, our principals had to work really hard making them aware that yes, you know, you're still going to have that 15%. It's going to count probably possibly toward your score. So really work hard and do your very very best. So several several things played into that. I feel like that made a difference. Now, if you look at our the last big sheet, this is growth. And I know sometimes of what I just showed you previously was what students did on the actual test, on the actual test date. Growth is a little bit different, um, which is also called TVOS. Um, and let me just read you the state definition for TBOS, which is the growth. And we are very proud of, of several of our growth scores. It says TBOS measures the impacts that schools and teachers have on their students' academic progress. It measures how much they grow from the previous year to the end of this year. So it's not that important what they make on that TCAP at the end of the year but it actually looks at what they scored at the end of the previous year and compares it to what they did this year. And so if you look at our growth, we do have some areas that we're very proud of. If you will look at some, the top portion is the schools. Um, we have um, school-wide composite, 
which is everything, all the tested areas, everything. We have Huntsville Middle School with a, a level five. We have Robbins with a level three. Scott High with a level five. Winfield with a level four. So you can see all the different areas here. We have school-wide composite, school-wide literacy, which would be all the uh, literacy, reading, English courses that a school has, and then numeracy, which is all the math courses, <laughs> then literacy and numeracy. So I'm not going to go down and read those uh, one by one, but um, we have improved in a lot of areas in growth. And I, probably if I had to choose which I think is more important, growth is very important because you can get a class of students that has some of those top kids in them and they may have come to you as top kids. And whether or not you have top kids <coughs> full years, you know, during the year, full years growth, then that's growth. Maybe they have already made on that actual TCAP a, TCAP a top score. So what we hopefully want to do is take those kids where they are and help them you know learn and exceed and academically grow one year's growth and that's what is reflected on this on this sheet if you look at the district score uh, we have come up system-wide literacy from a three we had last year to a four this year so um, we're pretty proud. We think we have shown some improvement or growth in, in this TVOS site. So, um, but again, there's there's more scores. That, I mean, I've got oodlings of paperwork in there, and we have, um, I've divided it down so principals can see individual teacher scores. Uh, we have score paperwork where the subgroups are there, but one person could spend hours and hours and hours and hours disaggregating everything that, that we've got. But hopefully this gives you a little bit of a picture of where we are and hopefully we are certainly going to work to improve next year. Or for this coming year actually. Any questions? If you have any questions that you'd like to ask me personally <coughs> about anything, I'd be happy to answer that too about these individual schools. Thank you. Ms. Vick, do you have anything? Uh, this has been a busy month, and like the principals have said, uh, the month of August has just flown by. We have done our AIMSWEB training, our CRT training, I've met with the assistants. We're in the process now of doing our AIMSWEB benchmark <coughs> testing. Uh, the month of August, we just had meetings, two and three and four meetings. One day I had five meetings at uh, different schools. So we're still seeing uh, a lot of children that are transferring in, uh, a lot of children in foster care. Uh, so we're, uh, we're getting referrals in. Children are already being referred by parents or teachers for testing. Uh, so we're just staying really busy in special ed as far as that goes. Our new teachers are doing a great job. Uh, working with Easy IEP, so really proud of all of them. And I do have uh, one thing for the agenda, and I put that up there on your, uh, on top of your folder. This is a memorandum uh, between our uh, students with disabilities and ClinchPAL, and this just says that our special ed department will provide evaluations for those students in Head Start. Uh, if that student qualifies, then we will go ahead and develop an IEP and then provide those therapies such as OT, PT, and speech. So if you all have any questions about that, feel free to ask me. Um, and that's really all I have, unless you all have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Here's some All right. Um, I have, I made y'all copies up there. Uh, General Purpose Amendment 2 is there in front of you. Um, federal Amendment number 2, it's got all the carryover on there. And then um, we made you copies of all the federal budgets, Title 125, the IDEA Part B, and the IDEA Preschool. Um, and then I also included copies of the Safe Schools Grant, the School Safety Grant is the one-time money that we received, and the Safe Schools is the reoccurring money that we receive every year. Thank you. Mr. Bond, do you have anything? Not really anything for the agenda. Uh, I'm still thinking it's July. <laughs> July, it's like the 63rd day of July. Uh, it's been a, it's been a, a 
busy, busy start. Uh, I was looking just in the past month, my guys closed out like 200 work orders, and we've still got 50 open. Uh, and what that is, is it's just a daily cycle. So uh, we're, 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 we're treading water. <laughs> so we're hoping that it'll slow down just a little bit. Um, lots of projects coming on that aren't really what you would consider you know, support problems or whatnot. We're trying to keep the teacher's stuff in their classrooms working uh, as quick as we, we can and then doing all the extra stuff. So, and it's going good. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Pauli. I don't have anything for the agenda. It's like everybody says, it's been busy. We've had a few challenges, but nothing we can't overcome. We've been doing great. School nutrition's moving on. We got one more challenge coming up that I know of. As of right now, we'll introduce the Smart Mouth Pizza. Most of you have seen. Um, and we'll start training on the 24th at the high school to introduce it, hopefully feed them on the 25th. Supposedly we can produce 200 in an hour. So uh, hopefully we can feed them all. It'll be a slow process and a challenge for us, but it's a new thing for them and it'll be good. Um, other than that, we've got everything in place. We're moving right along. Things are going well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mick. I do have two items for the agenda. Uh, one of them you have up there, and that's our uh, MOU between Scott County Schools and Mountain People's Health Council for our faculty and staff flu shots. Uh, everything with that MOU is the same as always, except for the dates have been changed. So uh, other than that, everything's still the same. So we're hoping to be able to uh, start that as soon as they receive the flu shots in uh, for this school year. And then the other thing is I have three PE teachers that I'm looking to send to a TAFER conference in Murfreesboro at the end of October. That's October 28th through the 30th. And I have those, that, uh, those three teachers will be listed up there also. So uh, that's the only things that I have for the uh, agenda. As far as coordinated school health goes, uh, we're actually very excited this year. We are going to be able to have, as you've heard, the principals mentioned our health screenings um, actually completed by September 20th and uh, that has never happened in, since I've been here in 2000, since 2010. Um, so we're very happy and excited to have that completed except for of course the rescreens but uh, that's the majority of everything. Well and except for Ms. Rector in the high school. We always wait till we're later on in the semester for the high school. But, for the elementaries and middle schools, that's a that's a big accomplishment. And we do uh, have TCAT nurses going to be able to help us at four of our six schools this year. So that's very exciting to know that we've got them back. We, we did not get a chance to use them last year. Um, and so we've got them back this year and very excited for their help that they're able to, to do with our health screens. And um, just so you all know, um, we have been able to purchase and provide for each one of the schools a uh, first aid trauma kit, a very big and nice uh, trauma kit. I hope we never have to unzip that and pull it out, and I hope everything runs out of date in it. But we do have it in each one of our schools just in case um, for a, a situation. So we're very thankful and happy to, to be able to provide those for each one of the schools. Uh, but that's all I have at this time, unless you all have anything for me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Uh, items for the agenda. Would like to uh, ask the board to appoint a legislative liaison for the Scott County Board of Education. Also, we need to appoint delegates to the delegate assembly during the TSBA convention. Uh, we'd also like to approve a memorandum of understanding with the Punch Power Cooperative Head Start Program. Also, uh, Mr. Murley would, would want to ask that we appoint a disciplinary hearing authority committee, committee for the Scott County School System. Also need to approve the following uh, overnight out-of-state trips. Uh, principal to the Tassel Academy, Greenville, Tennessee, September 30th to October 2nd. Teacher from Bronze Elementary to the Math Academy, Water State Campus, September 28th and 29th. 
Scott High School Beta Club, November 15th through the 17th, 2018, and also to the TASC Leadership Workshop, November 1st and 2nd. Uh, the Health and Nutrition, the Nutrition Department to the Tennessee State Commodity Show, 11 in Tennessee. Also the Title I Conference, uh, which will be December 4th through the 7th. That will, sit, uh, will be uh, a Title I Program Director and two teachers from each school. Will be in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Also, the following trips for Upward Bound, Carson Newman University, September 22nd, 2018, October 20th, 2018, November 17th, 2018, January 19th, 2019, February 16th, 2019, March 16th, 2019, May 4th, 2019. Also, Upward Bound to the Barter Theater on December 8, 2018, and to Dollywood, April 6, 2019. I do believe that all these are on a Saturday. Too. Also, I'd like to act the, ask the board to approve the reading of board policies. The first reading, policy 1.701, school district planning. Policy 3.212, district water testing. <coughs> policy 4.206, Homebound instruction, policy 6.200 attendance, policy 6.2001 attendance during post secondary visits. <coughs> also, to approve the second readings, policy number 6.309, zero tolerance offenses, policy 6.314, corporal punishment. Also, I would like to ask the board to amend the travel policy to add $5 per day. This is for state rate for incidental charges, since you cannot be in reimbursed for taxes, we'd like to add that to our policy that we will add five dollars per day while we're traveling. Um, that's all I have for the agenda. Quick reminder: uh, progress reports. Like I said, the midnight weeks is Wednesday. Progress reports will be going out this Friday. As Ms. Rector also mentioned too, on 9:28 will be the third grade day for uh, Scott County students at the Museum of Scott County and also as always of what's become a really a folk kind of event for our community is the Heritage Festival on September 29th beginning at 11 o'clock and closing at 5. And to reiterate what everyone else has said, the Bleacher Project at most schools have gone um, just about as smooth as good as it could. And I think those communities are very proud, not all the schools are. Also, with the communities that are there, we'll absolutely get years and years of service with this project. We are currently right now also looking for lots uh, for Winfield, kind of look whether to be it or not to be at the project, kind of wait and see what kind of takes place and kind of look at some pricing. Uh, so we are, that project right now is also underway. Uh, hopefully, if we can get it in by the last game, it would be tremendous. That's going to be hard, but we're trying. Um, and, uh, uh, as everyone has mentioned, it's been a great uh, start to our school. We'll continue that. And uh, guys, keep up the great work that what's taking place right now in our school systems. And that's all. I want to welcome Mr. Sexton. Thank you. We know you're here for the right reasons. You have a tremendous job representing the students of Scott County. So thank you. Um, and that's all I have with y'all questions for me. Thank you. Mr. Silcox, do you have anything? <coughs> I'd like to uh, welcome Derek to Glad to have him. I think he's going to be a great asset to the school system. I also would like to mention, I talked to Mr. Hall about I'd like to go for the board. We got a preparation for this to get fixed. I don't know what we need to do. But the uh, gazebo and the walking track at Fairview and the turbo shade. Uh, and we need to discuss too Scott High's parking lot back there. We're on that. Yep, we're on that. Yeah. We've been on it, so. I was out there the other day, yeah. and I think the garbage yeah. people has destroyed it. Yeah. Other than that, I think mean, it's all I have. I have a question about the AEDs. We have them in the gyms of all the schools, right? Mm -hmm. Do we have them in the cafeterias also? 
No, I don't. It's for you. Ours is in the hallway in front of the gym. The, the state law says that if you have one, it has to be in the gym. If you have more than one, you can put it in a second location, but it has to be in an area near the gym that's unlocked. Our second location is actually right behind in the cafeteria. Okay, because someone had brought that up to me that we needed one because there's a lot of um, choking and stuff oh, on yeah. the cafeteria. But it would probably be a good idea if we looked into doing that. I don't know what it would cost. And when Grant brought up what he did a while ago about the, you know, the uh, safety and first aid, it reminded me that we probably need to look into that. Having one in the cafeteria. I was thinking there's a couple, or maybe there's two that has them in it. Right. So they donated one to each school. That's what we yeah. did with ours. We put one in the gym and one in the cafeteria. Okay. And I do want to thank the board for giving us the bleachers at Robin School and the uh, score pop. We are so ecstatic down there. Oh, those bleachers. I mean, the community is coming out to watch football games. People are coming that never have come to a football game. And so, Mr. Shannon, we're really proud of Martin. Absolutely. It's unbelievable. They look so nice. So thanks for that. I just was wondering if we're getting any more bus drivers. Uh, we, I, I do know that we have had two more that have came in, put in an application for taking the test. I think one of our teacher assistants, I think Dr. Robbins is is doing that. Also one of our substitute school nurses who also been on the truck. So she's in the process of doing it also too. I've had a couple calls. So well, I guess we that's all. great because I'm, I know Huntsville's still getting three or four calls a week. Yeah. I don't know about that. I wish we weren't. I, 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 do. <laughs> I had a fellow that was interested in driving the bus. But they don't I hope they don't publish those books anymore for me to study. So they have to go online. Can we get a copy or something? You know, that, uh, I, think there, I think there are old copies, but I think it has pretty much moved online. Moved online. Yeah. That's what they told me. They've gone online. Are the old so copies got, similar to what the test uh, is? Uh, I'm sure, but I'm not 100% sure on that. I think they, they're real close, I think. Yeah. We may have to make some copies here and send them off to the other one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be good to do that because, you know, a lot of people do not get online. Is it something that you can't print off? They'll allow you? Uh, well, I did mine. I got to have the book, but I'm sure you can print them off. Okay. But they're pretty thick. Do you still have your book? Uh, I don't know. Somewhere. I'll look for it. I think they're pretty thick. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I did have a few um, requests from, from some of my Birchfield uh, people up there. Uh, I didn't know if I should mention it while Tanya's not here, uh, but uh, the, the things that were mentioned to me is uh, the bleachers, they had concerns about the kids maybe falling through the backs because there was a wide gap there or something, especially the smaller kids. Um, that was mentioned and maybe some of the teachers were concerned about it, but I didn't know if Miss Tanya had any insight on that. Um, also, uh, a walkway for the, the football stadium there. there. There's a lot of grass in between um, where everybody parks and the actual football stadium and bleachers. When it rains, uh, it gets really slick. Um, I have witnessed a few people kind of slip, slip and slide there. Um, but that's something that maybe we need to take up when the time's appropriate. I know that everything uh, has a, a, a place in the priority list, but uh, I think that's something that we need to address eventually. Uh, and I had someone uh, want to nominate someone to name the Birchfield uh, Stadium after. However, uh, since it's my first meeting, I don't know how those things go. I just wanted to bring them before the board because uh, I, I believe all those things are something that maybe we could accomplish when the time's right. Uh, but since it was mentioned to me, I feel obligated to pass it along to you guys and, and discuss it when it's appropriate. So, other than that, uh, just glad to be here. And uh, I don't know. I guess I'm done talking now. <laughs> well, one of the things that was brought to my attention was the PA system at Winfield. He said, one of the veterans said, I cannot hear the PA system. So, uh, is that something we need to try to take care of? Well, it's, it's something on the list. It's kind of like Derek uh, said. They do have a hard time because, yes. especially at Veterans Day, there are so many of the veterans there. And uh, we do use the microphone, but obviously that, that must not be working as well as one would hope. But, you know, we'll see what we can do, and I'll get with Mr. Paul and, you know, see if... Well, this is twice he's mentioned it to me. Uh, he, he could not hear. So, uh, let's see. We'll talk about it. <laughs> Ms. Daly, do you think that we could uh, coordinate the Veterans Day programs where we could attend more. I mean, I want to go to the Robins, but I've always wanted to go to the Winfield Veterans Program. And it's usually at the same time, so. We're looking at having uh, hours on Thursday this year for that very reason. Uh, so many of them are having them. Uh, you know, Monday we're off. And so we figured that a lot of the schools would have them on Friday. Right. So we're moving ours to Thursday okay, that would be good. To, to try to alleviate that problem because we do have an excellent turnout. Unfortunately, we also have several of our veterans that normally come to ours that have died this past year too. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we, we really hate that, but we do have a great turnout. It's always a good day for them. Yeah. Okay. With that, we can go home if you guys want to.